I remember this moment so clearly. I stepped back after I finished the game. I was like, it was, I was very touched by this journey, and I cared about these characters so much, and, and I was so invested. Because mm -hmm. what's powerful about gaming and interactive the experience is allows the, the player to have ownership yeah. or um, agency. Yeah, in the, the story that they're telling because they're in control of it. So it's their own decisions. Yeah, there's their consequences. They they they, they have owner. Is that what it's called to have agency? Agency, have, or, which is the same as ownership. Okay. Yeah, and that's also in my research too. Okay, that ultimately brought me to the point when I asked this question: like, there's nothing that does this for Islam. Mm. Nothing. The closest thing I could think of is Assassin's Creed. Conversations on marketing, media, and getting your story straight. We're here with Rakan. He's got his uh, digital portfolio. Here, I have underwork. I got illustration, animation, typography, 3D modeling and visual effects, some film. Uh, this is my master's thesis. I put a lot of stuff in there. This is my old work. Radi uh, Arba? Radi Arba, which was my, un my Unity ID first for university. Okay. And then myportfolio.com. Gotcha. See, when I was talking about like taking the did you see around. the movie Bilal? Yes, yeah. I did. Beautifully well done. It man. was it was weird because it's like some of the scenes are so photorealistic. Yeah, and then but the, the characters, characters is just like stylized. Yeah, but I just felt like they could have. Uh, I don't know, man. I personally liked the well, I, direction they took. I, I felt like it was like I had to. It's funny. I had to think about like oh how to train your dragon. Yes. Right, like that's the like. There's a lot of photorealistic scenes mm -hmm, in there, mm -hmm. but the characters are their own design. So let me show you this book real quick on understanding comics. He has uh -huh. a trilogy on writing comics. Yeah, and the whole book is written in comic book style. Nice. But in this book, he talks about elements that make comics work and make them not work, and how to flow flow through panels and such. And okay. And the type of storytelling that. Oh, he's got. He goes technical, huh? Yes, he goes very very technical. He gets to a point where he talks about art style. Here we go. Yeah. This is the triangle. Okay. Oh God. Uh, one one edge is super stylized. Real. Sorry, super realistic. Yeah. Um, and this oh, he one, put himself in the triangle. Yeah. This is more uh, abstract. One, and one punch man is the other end. <laughs> oh, I love one punch man. Oh my God. I watched it three times. Over. Dude, I got introduced to it by my wife because she's a huge manga fan. Really? But, but did you get introduced by the manga or the anime? No, so uh, so she first uh, showed me stuff from the manga. Yeah. Then she had me watch the season one of the anime, right? Sorry. And then as a gift, I bought her the first ten volumes. Holy cow! <laughs> she must have been really happy. Yeah, no, but I was surprised the artwork in the manga mm -hmm. looks so much better than the anime. Of course, it usually is the case. I was just like, wow. And the anime was really well done. Yeah, I was very really... beautifully animated. Yeah. The manga is also it's brilliant. Different art styles convey different things and have different strengths. So when we're talking about Bilal, for example, the more stylized you get, the more universal you become. Oh, okay. And so people from different backgrounds can relate to that easily. Is, is that why Toy Story, not Toy Story, but Pixar, yeah. has a very stylized character design? Mm -hmm. as Always. A, all, okay. all, that's the power of animation. Versus like Final Fantasy. Which becomes super realistic. And yeah. if you do that, what happens to you, the, the, the player being able to relate to that character? You lose a lot of that. Okay. And they be, have more of their own identity. Okay. But when it comes to environments, yeah. like trees and mountains and like buildings and cars, um, it, research shows that it doesn't matter how stylized or how photorealistic it gets, it won't affect, affect the emotional. Uh, no, not necessarily. Okay. That's why with the new Toy Story movie, it's so photorealistic, yeah. but the characters are still yeah. very much like the first movie. Very cartoony, kind of. So, there's the strength in that. Uh, I'm glad you were able to point that out or, or recognize it. What is fine art? Uh, uh, fine art would be more traditional art. Okay. Typically. Anything so, that's physical. Okay, tangible. Yeah, paintings, uh, even sculptures as well. Photography? Photography could be considered fine okay. art. Okay, so long as it's, there's a printed aspect to it. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Right? Because yeah. if it's just digital, never printed, is it still fine art photography? Mm, people wouldn't necessarily consider it. To okay. Me. I mean, you can bend the meaning, but yeah. fine art usually refers to more mm, traditional. Okay. Art. So this is stuff that you did hand, mm -hmm. and then you took a photograph of it, 
Yeah, I scanned it. So okay. I mean, I would love to go so back. How would you, like that photo, right? <coughs> which is right here. How would you scan that? Is photo, this, photo. Okay, you would actually take yeah. a photo. But it's okay. very rough. You can see the, you see the corners right there? Yeah. It's, so the angle's not right. The, the light and the coloring is not right, too. Okay. If I was to go back, I did this back like yeah, a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But if I was to do this again, it would be much better. I love this one. It's back here. Yeah. <clears throat> what is that, watercolor? Yeah, it's watercolor. But, I did this. But how do you get it to stay within the lines? Oh, um, you can pre-create those lines with water. You can create that space while washing it with water alone. Okay. And then you can dip your color in that. There's so many different strategies to approaching. Nice. Color. And I'm guessing this was around the same time? Yeah. With Savannah? This is like my first time painting in years. And that's when I heard back from... It's the Japanese aesthetic college. that I always, always, uh, um, uh, I found to be very beautiful. And then here's your <laughs> yeah so what i was saying i was mentioning to him i was like you know you don't have to quote unquote finish it because it's like it's a concept piece. you have the concept piece right this is the part that's in assassin's creed world and just put some dot matrix stuff here to make it look like he's still <laughs> the he's, animus the animus yeah. all the way here so the other thing i was wondering about is the celtic arab video yeah. game but there's two characters there one is celtic and the other is arab mm -hmm. my master's thesis was like 80 pages long Oh, you actually had a write-up too. I wrote an entire research paper. Okay. I give you some outline, like introduction for my purpose, my theoretical frameworks, my the, so the theories I base upon. Yeah. Moral reframing, po a choice poetics, yeah. and gamification of learning. These okay. three theories are fundamental to my project. And then I go into a little bit of um, some supporting theories that are outside the realm of design. Yeah. From like from. Uh, anthropology from sorry cultural anthropology uh, cultural anthropology you have English mythology um, I also referenced Islamic teachings anything outside of design and I mentioned some of these you got uh, the whole um, Joseph Campbell yes definitely research yeah. Joseph Campbell and his um, <coughs> uh, what's it called hero's journey yeah and basically structuring a story and the, the typical structure, the universal structure of, of myth. Did I, myth. did I ever share with you the, uh, the, the story analysis of Surah Yusuf in comparison to the Hero's Journey? Okay. You did, you did. Beautiful. Very well said. I've got more. I'm sure you do. There's so, so much Yeah, to it. there's so much more to it. Yeah. And this is why it resonated so much with me, because everything I tried to relate to, like prophetic stories, yeah. the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares the journeys of these prophets, yeah. follow these steps, and make it so universal and re resonate with us as humans. The one thing that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've started kind of exploring in my mind recently is how, and I, have, I have yet to find it, but like comic relief, for example, mm -hmm. is a major thing that's necessary in presentation today. And I was thinking to myself, is there a level of communicated lightheartedness or comic relief within the stories of the Quran? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd be good to to think of, and if so, there's a reason why Allah would share it. Yeah, like there's plenty in the from the Sirah. Yeah, right. Of course. But I'm just wondering within the, the actual Quran. Yeah, within the Quran itself. That would be interesting to look into. Using this, <coughs> Joseph Campbell and and modern mythology, I use this. Oh, is to, that what that means? Monomyth. Yeah, the monomyth is, is modern mythology. <coughs> monomyth is like. The universal mythology that is applicable to all of humanity. Well, okay. And, and you look at all different types of cultures, historic, historic or modern. Yeah, like the hero's journey. Yeah. Okay. They all have these stories that they share with their people. Yeah. That follow a very similar path. Gotcha. You see, and that's why it's called the monomyth because it, it's it's universal. Right. 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 Um, another term for it is modern mythology as well. And so I mentioned the statement right here being the hero's journey and a universal construct that can be found in our daily lives. Immortalized folk tales, mythical legends, and prophetic biblical tales, what do they all have in common? In identifying the construct of stories and their heroes, it helps us realize how it can be both universal and extremely personal and intimate. I really enjoyed researching this stuff. I, I can see that. <laughs> it brought so much life to what I'm trying to do here. Banner Saga is a very similar format I'm trying to follow. Yeah. I'll show you some images of Banner Saga. Oh, you know what? The aesthetic of what you're showing me? 
right here. is very similar to what you did. Yeah, I was heavily inspired by this. Oh, wow. So, and this art style... Like, I would have thought that this is the same thing. No. See? Okay. I, this, that's a compliment. Thank you. Um, what Banner Saga did, their art style oh, is following is an artist by the name of Ivan Earl. This is so... It's a ski resort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I see that. So it's the cycle. setting is a uh, Nordic. So okay. <clears throat> so these are all, like, Viking kind of people. Yeah. <clears throat> It's all hand-drawn animation, which made it stand out from the rest of video yeah. games of its time. Because <laughs> everything was like 3D animated yeah, yeah, and all yeah, yeah, like yeah. fancy flash But it still looks digital 3D, yeah, yeah, sort yeah, yeah. of. And what makes it beautiful is they use something called the parallax effect, where you have different layers working, sure. moving at different rates. They call it the parallax? I call it the after effects layer. The after effects? Yeah, like the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> And it's, it's a term used also in film okay. as well. Like as you're passing, things are closer to you. Yeah, move they move faster, right? And, and things then, are yeah. farther slower. So when it comes to the art, you have full control over this and you can layer your scene. You have like full way. composition mm -hmm. of the image. And you, it becomes very immersive. And yeah. So Ivan Earl, who's the artist who worked on, um, he's very well known for Disney's uh, Sleeping Beauty. Okay. And his the art style is very unique. So this is all of his paintings this okay. is like before a lot of digital work. And his, his, like the kind of detail he put in yeah, his like foliage. The, yeah. So he still had grand the shapes. Lighting. Yeah. The lighting uh, and all. Um, so Banner Saga, their artists were heavily inspired by Ivan Earl and they created their work. Oh, so this is inspired by him. Inspired by him. Okay. He passed. He passed a long time ago. Okay. Uh, and the game has a lot of story driven character development yeah. uh, choice elements in the game as well with consequent very deep consequences very okay. thoughtful consequences and like cons like so choices. it's more like it's it's an animation that's being played by but it's choose your own adventure animation yeah Oh. Yeah. And there's there's aspects of journey and travel. So you, yeah. you're traveling with a caravan across this this very treacherous land, yeah. and you come across events that you have to make choices to with. Have you seen uh, Castlevania? Yeah. Oh, so good. Dang. <laughs> you're mentioning all the beautiful things, man. And then there's combat elements too, yeah. and it works just like chess. You have different players that have different skill sets and move sets. Okay. And everyone takes a turn back and forth. Yeah. So does your game have that element built? I, I plan it. Okay. I didn't. I'm only one person. Right, right. I would imagine because yeah. all of that is just like a multi-man team. That's a very lot of work, and all this is hand animated, yeah. which makes it even more beautiful to look at. So I was heavily inspired by this game when I first played it. I was like, and I learned so much about Norse mythology, Norse yeah. history, and I began to research that stuff on my own. I just love how they make. You have the foreground. Yeah. You got the background right there, and then you got the extreme background over there. And I would imagine this is all animated, right? Yes. yes. Oh. It's so beautiful. And I was inspired by what it did for Norse mythology. Yeah. And I told, I, I remember this moment so clear. I stepped back after I finished the game. I was like, it was, I was very touched by this journey. And I cared about these characters so much. And, and I was so invested. Because mm -hmm. what's powerful about gaming and interactive the experience is allows the, the player to have ownership yeah. or um, agency. Yeah, in the, the story that they're telling because they're in control of it. So it's their own decisions. Yeah, there's their consequences. They they they, they have owner. Is that what it's called? To have agency. Agency, have, or, which is same as ownership. Okay. Yeah, and that's also in my research too. Okay. That ultimately, brought me to the point and asked this question: like, there's nothing that does this for Islam. Mm. Nothing. The closest thing I could think of is Assassin's Creed. Like, here's the thing: you look at this, it's Nordic, right? Mm -hmm. All right. You know, it's Nordic. You might not. Most people may not know where that is. Maybe they have this idea of European. Yeah, yeah. But after going through this game, it doesn't feel foreign. No. You get what I'm saying? Well said. And so, whereas well the thing is, most Muslims outside of the African American population, right? They come off after th <laughs> after three generations now. Mm -hmm. They can still come off as foreign. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key thing here is to make cultures cultures less foreign. And I think the dean that the people follow of these various cultures becomes more. But without the expense of, of compromising that identity or assimilating to the point where you lose. Well, I'm not talking about assimilation. Yeah. And this is a whole different thing. And I, and it's more representation. Just like you represent yourself in all forms right, of Right, right, right. And like the one, the, the Islam part is one layer of one's identity. True. true right? True, true. 
because Islam will determine the ethics to follow mm -hmm. within all the other aspects of a person's identity. Very well articulated. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So, but at the same time, people shy away from other layers of their identity mm -hmm. because they feel either it's too foreign for themselves or for others, or for to, others take. to take in or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then you see the effect of a fictional foreign identity mm -hmm. of Wakanda. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but it becomes less foreign. Again, it was inspired by real yeah. cultures, but still it's totally fictional. Yeah. And the type of impact that it had on people was amazing. Yeah. I, I lived in Kenya for six years, and um, the, the female warriors that... They're, they're like Kenyan... Maasai, Maasai warriors. Okay. They're Kenyan Maasai warriors. They dressed very similar way. They behaved in a very similar way. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Very strong personalities. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. The, the women are strong warriors, and the men are fast runners. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With regards to the thesis, I don't know. A lot of my thesis artwork yeah. is in... Illustration, so we'll look at that real quick. Oh, I'll there you go. That's the, uh, that's the graphic novel you first showed me. I remember sharing that with you. You were like, Whoa, was that you? I was like, Yeah, that's me, man. <laughs> I was so excited to share it with you because I knew you'd appreciate it. So I, t I titled this piece Taming the Barbarian. I, I was just like, Yo, where's the rest of the story? <laughs> it's, it's four pages. That's it. Yeah. It took a long time to do, too. I, I mean, it looks like it, looked like it took a there was, Like the actual story writing and the finding your characters, yeah. that took up. Like, I'm sure there's so in your mind, mm -hmm. there's probably so many layers just behind these characters. There is, there is, there is. People who see something like this, right away they're thinking Marvel DC. Yeah. They're not thinking about the breadth of the medium. Mm -hmm. Very true. And I'm but look, look at Will Eisner. Yes. I love his work. Right, but like that guy didn't do superheroes except no. for the spirit, maybe. It was just like real, real life. Yeah, like his whole thing was to showcase this medium as a legitimate form of literature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I which, think we're getting, Which is a lot... You talked a lot about in that book I shared with you, Understanding Comics. So yeah. God. I think we're getting there slowly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But these ideas you've always had. It's like I talked to somebody else, Will Eisner, I was like, oh, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. And all the so then, early sketchwork, yeah. So I had to, like, define the character, make the look for their different emotions. It's all part of character design. Um, get different angles of that character the kind of clothing they were this is just like the final look after yeah. I decided what he, I wanted him to wear and how I wanted him to look and then you get to that but there's even steps before that it looks that. like Conan yeah uh, it was inspired by Conan okay uh, this is the writing of the story yeah. and just like uh, I had pages before that defining the character his strengths and his weaknesses and, yeah um, yeah um his goal, his hopes, and his fears. Yeah. There's there's many layers to a character that one needs to be able to define before you even write the story because it informs your story. Yeah. And you like, what's their backdrop? Yeah. Like, if because when you get into the story, you're literally jumping into a moment in time. Yeah. But there's a history. What led to that? And the history you may never be revealed to you. Yeah. As a reader. Yeah. But it informs all the things that will happen in that story. Yeah. For the writer. Yeah. Which is so important. Yeah. What was the, the the animation that you did about like that? Um, thumb wrestler, I think. It's was one. it the thumb wrestler? Yeah. Yeah, that was the thumb wrestler. This yeah. Is it, this is it. Oh, this it, was this it. Is okay. The one I shared with you. Yeah, the, and and that the girl with the little girl. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that was it. I had so much fun doing this. This was entertaining to watch. Thanks. <laughs> I would love to fully realize the story. So another part of character design is silhouette design. Yeah they have to be instantly recognizable just by their silhouette okay and how they stand in reference to each other is also very important so i played the different proportions of the head and the shoulders and the legs and the arms and to each other this is the opening cinematic i designed for my game okay of the celtic arab i don't think you've seen this. no i have not so i can we can play this real quick
no idea who who you are, how you end up here, who's this guy, what's happening to him, yeah. why am I here? So it's make, like uh, I remember the opening scene of uh, uh, in Inception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have all these questions and all these. If you raise questions that are significant questions, the people want to stay along for the ride. Yeah, they're they're intrigued and they're, yeah. they want these questions to be answered. <clears throat> it's like what's with the axe why is he on in the desert exactly like what did he who did he piss off <laughs> so we'll, we'll get to this point after that's part of my thesis right here so okay. it's open semi for my game um jumping ahead i did some work for the alchemist oh uh, the book the book yeah, yeah. we were i read that book in a day and i was so disappointed why because the guy went on an acid trip two thirds in the way in right <laughs> with the wind and the, yeah, yeah all of that i was just like what is going on here <laughs> I'm like I, I, I wish they at least said like, oh yeah, he definitely got drugged up or something. That is that, that that's the scene. That's the scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a trip. Hey, you got an A, right? <laughs> we were, so this class was uh, visualizing narrative. Mm -hmm. It's all about typography. And okay. Using typography to tell a story. Okay. So this this project was about looking at illuminated text. Dude, it would make it's so perfect. The alchemist goes on an acid trip. <laughs> That's the whole underlying story. Yeah, that's, that's the, the whole, whole underlying story. To be able to tell a part of the story with just a letter, so yeah. here's the A as well. Yeah. And to tell elements of the story, like this oh, is a dream. The, 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 this is right here is a, a little bit of a spoiler, though. It is kind of, uh, not really. I mean, we know he's a shepherd early on. Right, but like the just the whole pyramid factor, and then, well, it doesn't give a, give away the Spain origin. No. Wow, I'm sure you love that part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most memorable part was the part where they would serve tea to the people that would make it up the hill yes, in Morocco. Yes, yes, yes. And I was like, I want some of that tea. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so here's some animations of the character. Yeah. So this character's name is Ivan. He's the main character, the protagonist of the story. Okay. Um, I wrote him as a crusader. Okay, really? Yes. So but a Celtic? See, I did had to do some research about okay. this, and then apparently there was a small number of Celtic warriors who joined the crusade. Interesting. The first crusade, like in ten nine. Have you seen the Seventh Seal? That's a movie. It's uh, part of the Criterion Collection. It's the story of. Um, so this is death, and it's during the time of the Black Plague, and Crusades, right? Oh, I'm already. And a, and a crusader, is the one who's playing a game of chess with, with death. death. And right here. And one of my one of my yeah, one of my dreams is to retell the story in modern context. Mm. Is it a scene? Like, would you recommend I watch the scene or the whole movie? No, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, watch the whole movie. Okay, I'll keep this up. So, his story is that he's a crusader who wants to seek redemption. He's always been recognized as an unbeatable warrior who's strong and powerful. He has a, tra a tragic background, sure. which slowly unveils itself as you pass through the story. He tries to... I, I like to tell the story because he's a man who's skeptical of God. Ultimately, it becomes a very private and personal journey of a man who's seeking peace yeah. in, in that. Because so many bad things has happened to him to the, to the point where he questions God. He's like, why did God do this all, right. all this to me? And his journey will help him realize some of the lessons of why this has happened to him and to, to trust in, in God's ultimate plan yeah and to be at peace with that right and I think it will speak to a lot of people who have had a lot of turmoil in their lives and, sure and, and to hopefully find peace and understanding that there's a reason behind why everything happens doesn't doesn't devalue the or devalidate the pain that yeah. people go through yeah in but fact, it, it acknowledges acknowledges yeah. acknowledges the fact that the pain exists. Yes, and so, but the pain is not in vain. Yes, yes, thank you. The yeah. pain is not in vain. So that's a part of his journey. Now, on his way to the Crusades, his shipwrecks, which yeah. is what you saw in the cinematic. Okay. Um, but unknowing to him, and he's rescued by this nomad Arab right here. Oh, that's so dope! The fact that you can turn go back to that again. Yeah, and then that's a still image. Yeah, that's no, but like the way it transitions. Yeah, I purposely did that together. That's dope. <laughs> Thanks. That is so cool. He's rescued by this nomad Arab. Yeah. Who and and that looks very similar. To oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, my friend who went to Spain. Yeah. He he got this book for me, and he like he visited Hamra and all these places. Yeah. But he's like, yo, I'm gonna get this book for you, and I want you to learn from it. So I've been 
incorporating a lot of design, these designs design and, and design. learning about their history and their symbols and yeah, their meanings yeah. and how they're made. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, so he goes on this journey and he's rescued by this man. But unknowing to this guy, yeah, you're the main character, the character you play, Ivan, yeah. is that you're 600 years late. From the beginning, he perceives Muslims as the enemy. Okay. Okay. Of course, and Crusades, I, right? And his goal is to fight for God and to fight God. Because he does have an inkling of hope of getting there, right. despite all his strategies. Uh, but, unknowing to him, by the time he shipwrecks on the coast of modern-day Morocco, yeah, and rescued by this dude right here, yeah. who this I named... Who's the enemy? Yeah. Okay. Who I named Rakan. Of course. <laughs> Who's that handsome young man? Older gentleman. That's me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, that's Rakan at 50. Oh man, he's so be- If I could only be that beautiful. Anyway. Um, he is... Ivan is 600 years late. He time travels. Oh. Unknowing time. So uh, that puts So that's why I shipwrecked. He went through a wormhole. Yeah. Very similar to that. Which I used based off of a Celtic legend called the Voyage of Bran. Which is a whole other story. Hey, isn't Bran in uh, uh, Castlevania? Yeah, there's a character named Bran. Yeah, this he's a vampire, a, though, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a different. Okay, Bran, different though. guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We're so making so many inside references to different <laughs> pop culture things <laughs> that, unless you're into anime and 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 uh, graphic novels and film and design, you, yeah, you might just go over your head. Yeah. That puts him in the context of the Ottoman Empire. Oh. Uh, 1600, so 17th century. Okay. In the, in the height of the empire. Yes. Okay. At a time where there's relative peace between Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Yeah. And corruption is slowly seeping slowly in, seeping in, and taking taking hold in the higher ups, which is something I'm planning to represent in the game as well. Okay. Because he, in, in his journey, he eventually becomes a Mamluk. Okay. He becomes enslaved, and he has to f- he has, he. he Yes, you have to fight out of that slavery. Okay. Um, and that's a whole like it's a turning point in the story. Oh, that's gotta suck, man. Six hundred years in the future. Yeah, and but you don't know this, but small hints happen throughout the journey, and your your goal is to get to Jerusalem, and then okay. you, you come to this agreement that this man is gonna accompany you to Jerusalem okay. from where you are in modern day Morocco, and so it becomes like a brotherhood journey okay. between these two characters. So he's basically his guide and yeah. mentor and protector. He does. And he's his eyes through yeah. the Islamic world. And okay. Should you choose to, as a player, mm-hmm. you can ask questions and learn about the world and the context and the, and the characters that you're around. Yeah. But what's the motivation that. of Rakan to guide? Good uh, point. Yeah. So this man is on his way back to his home, <laughs> which is not too far from in, in Ten... Uh, I forgot the name. Ten Jews? Agadir. Agadir. Agadir, okay. Agadir in Morocco. Uh, small, so small coastal city off the yeah. coast of Morocco. But he's planning for Hajj. Oh. And so he's already he's going like, oh, I'm already going there. You want to tag along? Exactly. Oh, okay, I got you. So that's like the just... He's like, and you don't look like too threatening of a guy with that big battle axe. <laughs> he's like, no, he's confident enough he can handle himself. So that's pretty much the premise of the journey, of the story. So there's, there's journey, there's a relationship with God, there's uh, learning and understanding a new culture, mm. fish out of water story, Okay. which is something I'm really into as well. Um, it's classic story trope that works exactly and it yeah. works very well and hopefully if I open up my game developing studio I want to create future games that follow that same structure yeah fish out of water story of a character from a different culture have you okay generation. if you are wanting to learn more about genres that sell yeah. two books you gotta get if you haven't already I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready, right. I'm, ready, I'm, ready I'm ready I'm ready one is save the cat save the cat yes uh, okay so you were saying oh I was saying the second book yeah oh sorry is uh, Save the Cat goes to the movies. Is this the second book? Yeah. Other than Save the Cat? <laughs> so Save, Save the Cat is basically goes into the, I think, eight or nine uh, most uh, best-selling genres in uh, film that also translates to other movies and whatnot. And Save the Cat goes to the movies goes in depth into the various case examples of those genres and the variations of it. So I think like some of their their tropes or their. Um so I'll give you an example. Um, so the main ones they talk about monster in the house, right? Aliens, Jaws, Cabin in the Woods, right? Like these are, but three very different movies, mm-hmm. but they're all have to do with the fact that they're trying to escape from a monster that's stuck within the house, 
right? Okay. Uh, you have ordinary dude, extraordinary problem, uh, right? Yeah. AKA Die Hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, then you have extraordinary dude in an ordinary Nor- world, ordinary i.e., world. superhero film. Yeah. Right. His problem is being torn down by the jealousies of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the buddy love, mm-hmm. right? And there's so many uh, variations of that. Buddy love, like the buddy cop movie, and all romantic movies mm-hmm. are buddy love, except two That's opposite true. genders. Yeah. Um, then there's uh, the institutionalized. It shows the pros and cons of uh, c- different institutions through the story of a character, i.e., Godfather. Okay, right, sense, yeah. uh, and then there's other ones is the coming of age uh, type of story, right? Or, or not the coming of age, rite of passage, rite of passage, right? And the sub c- cases of it is a coming of age, is a midlife crisis, mm. is a breakup. Mm-hmm. Like these are all uh, rite of passage stories. I would love to read this now. Yeah, so this it's exactly up down my alley. So um, uh, and, and uh, th- there's a few more. Uh, a few more examples that they're called that the road trip, okay. right? Which is your classic hero's journey, right? Which is what I'm writing. And also within it is the heist. Oh. They they all consider it as part of the same. But the these are like the the road trip, the hero's journey, and the heist because are all. It's a journey together with a group of people. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a physical journey. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a physical journey exactly. I love it. I love that. So you got you the, 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 the both these books are like a must. Um, okay. And I think it'll definitely uh, be a value. I'm sure it would contribute to this very much. Yeah. Had I known this, I probably would have included <laughs> this in my research. This is good material. Uh, but this is coming from a very marketing perspective, mm-hmm. marketing and sales. Like sales. Uh, not only that, he goes into the technical aspects because from marketing and sales, like outside of movies, we always talk about headline writing, advertising writing, copywriting. Yeah. He goes right into that from the beginning, the log line, the story premise. How would you present it? He's like, you have a story idea? Great. Now go out to present to 5th, 25 strangers and see their reaction, yay or nay. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. his whole objective with Save the Cat is by the end of the book, you have your screenplay. Okay. Right? And so, and even if you don't write a screenplay, at least you get to understand the mechanics of how he's approaching the writing of the story through the reality that is show biz. Mm. But the biz aspect has to do with market supply and demand. That makes sense. Right? Makes sense. And so and market supply and demand has to do with framing the structure of story, which goes into the monomyth. Yeah. yeah. Right? And yeah. so long as it's properly structured within the in the right package vehicle, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you'll be able to present it and sell it. I could it. definitely use that. Yeah. I could definitely use that. Awesome. I want to share with you a moment in the game. So there's a moment in the game where you can have your characters. I think it's right here. Okay. You have your characters are seen by the fire after they have their initial meeting. There's supposed to be a fire here. I'm mm. sorry. <laughs> there, his initial shock and surprise, like, what's going on? He asks his questions, and who are you, and why am I here, and blah, blah, blah. And then, like, we come to the conclusion, okay, we have to begin this journey, but first we're going to go to your home and then, like, collect ourselves. Um... At this situation, you can open up, the scene becomes interactable, and you can click on different elements. So, one common thing you can look at is your weapons. You can click on his weapon, you can click on your weapon and his weapon. Mm. And you learn something from each element. So, it's kind of like a point-and-click adventure. Okay. Uh, If you do click on Rakan's weapon, and he'll make fun of how small it is and how weird-looking it is. This is a Yatagan, by the way. Okay. Which is a, a traditional long knife, an Ottoman long knife. Okay. Oh, one of those. And they it's are... It's basically a long dagger. Yeah, but what's interesting about them is that it curves down. Downwards, yeah. So giving the weight at the tip of the, the blade rather than at the base of it, um, which gives it more strength when mm. you swing it. and. Um, Especially because of how small it is. Yeah. It's got a heavier tip. Yeah. It's almost like wielding an axe. Yes, yes, and it's on right. Yeah, it's beautiful. And usually, the hilt from an Ottoman, historically Ottoman perspective, the hilt is usually made from ivory or bone. Okay. Like that. Nice. And a place where a person would usually like rest. You know what's interesting? Some of those cane swords. Yeah. Those are like the guns, English, right? English, um, yeah, like European cane yeah. swords. But those are like ra- rapiers almost. Like okay. Very straight. The yatagan is. It's curved, and they're so cool, and they come in different, and some even have like engravings on them, which is really cool. And that's what the uh, thing you were showing me. So what I was showing you here, our character, Rakan, has an engraving of an ayah from the Quran, 
ألم يأني للذين آمنوا أن تخشى قلوبهم لذكر الله Has it not come time to those who believe in Allah to find peace and tranquility in the remembrance of God mm. and or humility, peace and humility in the remembrance of God and oh, he's got the archer's glove he does, yeah, he's also an archer as well yeah, he has his, his, he's sitting he's got in his bow, of, right which is traditional Turkish bows are very small okay but they're very heavily recurved because they're tactical short range bows yeah and they'd be have they they'd have to be able to shoot on horseback as well mm. so that small bow is very yeah. important anyway there's a reason why he has that verse on his sword and he goes into the context and the meaning of what it means to him personally yeah. like the actual meaning of it and what it means to him I don't want to spoil the story, but there's it just becomes very meaningful and very organic unfolding of learning about each other. Okay. Um, and so I, I plan to teach about Islam through narrative, through yeah. character development. That way it becomes engaging for the user and, and it's something that they care about. Well, things, what you're doing really is you're teaching people about this character who happens to be Muslim. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's not like I'm teaching you Islam. It's not preaching. Which is not. Which is exactly what I'm trying not to do. Yeah. Because coming from a teacher's perspective, yeah. I, I, I taught high school science. It gets so boring when you're teaching one to the black and white of things, the facts of things. Yeah. But when I turn this into a story, it becomes so much more interesting and more memorable. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's not about who he is. It's about that Cel- a Celtic guy. Yeah. Right? And I he... always want to bring him back to, yeah. to the Celt. And then the Celt makes a comment in his own mind but you, that you can read as a player. He's like, God, like, why would God do... He starts... He becomes critical of yeah. God. And like, why would I find peace and tranquility in God after everything that he's done to me? Right. So yeah. it's... it's, it's but the other thought could also come in, maybe coming from a player, mm. like, somebody might even say is, like, you have peace and tranquility written on a... What sword? Uh, on, what kind of juxtaposition is that? Right, like yeah, not even just a sword, sword, but something of violence. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is very interesting too. Yeah. And he does he does justify it in his own perspective, uh, but you may not agree with it, and that's fine. It it, it shows you a different yeah way of looking at things. Uh, here, I was, this little video is playing with the parallax effect here. Oh right, so with the background the, and stuff. Yeah. So the scene becomes interactable and you can drag it left and right. So yeah. I can move it as, as fast or slow as I want. Right. Whenever I want. Okay. And it will behave in its own way. Gotcha. That's why that's the strength, the power of an interactive uh, game. And the game kind of, st- this is like a rush, rough beginning. This kind of plays like some of those uh, anime games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. But how does he end up learn? Is this like a game thing where you just sci-fi stuff where they learn understand know each, each other, other. You know, I justify that he, he he makes a statement of being a, a well-traveled man who knows multiple languages okay and he makes a comment about his language is a dialect he's never really heard before okay and here it is I've seen many cultures learn many languages but you my friend are for are of an origin I cannot um, distinguish okay anyway the demo is much more refined than this little video right here yeah and the transitions are better, the artwork is better, the dialogue is better, there's voice acting to all this too. So I had to direct, I had to hi- I had to scout talent and to direct voice talent. Okay. To get the right emotions and statements. Oh, so how many, did it take you a lot of people to go through? Oh man, it took so long to get the right voices. Okay. I have, I finally found someone that could speak Gaelic and speak a Russian, I, I mean, sorry, Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Irish accent. Um, for the Rakan character, I did it myself. Okay. And then there's the narrator character, which took a long time. I end up with a female voice. Uh-huh. One of my, one of the students that was with me in, in uh, college of design. Yeah. She. Now is that where we so go into good. the next character? Oh, this girl character is a potential character in the future. Okay. Um, she'll be the wife of Rakan. She okay. Seems I was a little say, young. She looks like a fighter. Uh, she could. She. I don't know. She. I would say she looks forty. I don't know. Uh, some people made the comments. They say like she looks so young for this man. Like oh, how could you do that? I was like okay, whatever. But I was thinking maybe a healer maybe, character. Maybe she ages she gracefully. Yeah, <laughs> people in North Africa <laughs> age beautifully, man. So it's this is all hand drawn, though, right? All hand drawn. No, this is digital. This is. But you painted digital or you hand drew? I painted it? digital as well. This is why I'm trying to say if I did your thing again. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is way better than the way. Why is that? You? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so aware of how bad it was. It would be much better if I did it again. I, I like how you have like the depth 
Um, yeah, I layered this as well. Yeah. And you can see here, yeah, I did it in pieces. So first it started as a sketch. Yeah. And then I add the flat color. But that, that pencil sketch was on the computer? This also computer. Wow. You can use, there's different brushes that have different textures to them. Okay. This is all computer right there. Um, thanks. And then uh, you add the flat color. Yeah. I did a little bit of highlight here. And then you add the lighting. Yeah. So this is what you call rim lighting to give yeah. the highlight to it. And then you add the lighting. So there's the light areas and the sh shaded areas. See the difference? Yeah. Pops. And the difference between um, shooting you here, right here, right now, and then getting like some key lights light. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So that's pretty much most of my research thesis. That's all under animation. Typography is another small thing. I worked on titles for the Celtic. Yeah, typography is hard. It's so hard. <laughs> I did this quote by Paolo Coelho. Yeah. And then this quote by Yasmin Mujahid. Okay. Just a juxtaposing definition of love. Yeah. So. And I screen printed this and I layered them on top of each other. So Paolo Coelho says, Love is an untamed force. When we try to control it, it destroys us. When we try to imprison it, it enslaves us. When we try to understand it, it leaves us feeling lost and confused. I intentionally left this space to yeah. give that feeling of lost and confused. But then Yasmin Mujahid, on the other hand, says, Your life is nothing more than a love story between you and God. Nothing more. Every person, every experience, every gift, every loss, every pain is sent to you, is sent to your path for one reason, one reason only, to bring you back to him. Which I found very beautiful. And I liked how they perceived love to be very different things. Mm. That was the purpose of this project too. And I had to come up with concepts of how I'd layer them. Yeah. I ended up with something more perpendicular then I did a short story too oh this is this is good what is lost and gained yeah this is a story about what if the world adopted a, a unifying language a single language have you seen that movie with um, Hawkeye and Lois Lane oh okay. uh, oh this is new no I haven't seen this yet okay so you talk about universal language yes and mm -hmm. and you appreciate science yeah of course man. okay then you would and you like time travel? <laughs> Great. Obviously. Boom. That's all I can say without spoiling too much. Okay. Seven. Okay. So I got yeah, seven, seven seal. seal. You got and arrival. You got save the cat. So I wrote a short story from the perspective of two brothers who are merchants. Uh -huh. uh, one res wants to keep their own personal language. The other one wants to adapt and change and like abandon his culture and just focus on this thing to reach a bigger market and to make. Money. Right. 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 But it begs the question, like, our identity, our culture, our preservation of it, how important is it? It's a short story, but yeah. I use typography to tell the whole story. Oh. It's really cool. Overly theatrical or melodramatic. And then this one's disturbing, horrifying. They both seem like derivatives of uh, Helvetica. Helvetica? Who? This is like your standard um, uh, postmodern typeface. I use sans serif typeface. Oh, it's a type? Yeah. Oh, cool. It looks very modern. Yeah, I mean, like you'll see it everywhere. Like you see it, you've seen it. Man, I'm learning so much tonight. Thank you. Hey, man, I'm getting to see a lot of cool stuff here. This is wonderful. I really appreciate it. Exchange of ideas. It's quite enriching. And this is how do you say it? Ra Diarba. Ra Diarba. It just took Rakan. The first two letters uh -huh. and Diarba, but that. oh, Ra Diarba. Boom. And I have the core right here. Travel. You look like you're in Jurassic Park or something. <laughs> and looking up at a brontosaurus. <laughs> I'm admiring it from the, from the shadows. Like, Please don't step on me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. And remember to subscribe, like, and share with your friends. And I'll see you soon.